I don't really have anything to talk about today or to show. But you know, that's not going to stop me from making an hour long video, right? So I thought I would just do a little stream of consciousness thing and just show you some of the stuff that I've been working on or that's on my mind or whatever. Um, Christmas is coming up and so I'm going to start pulling out my Christmas stuff here pretty soon. And I've made, um, well I have, I've only made one thing but I'm going to make some more. I made this little tree. And it's out of the, you know, paper tubes that I've been rolling out of newspapers and stuff. And uh, it's cute. I like it. I just spray painted it silver. And I haven't quite worked out what I want to do for the top yet. I've got some ideas. Just hadn't done it. But the base of it is a cone. You know, there's a few videos back I, I showed some stuff that my sister brought for me and gave me. And in that were several cones full of cotton yarn that she got at a Goodwill or something for practically nothing. But this is what they're wrapped around, these these cardboard cones. So I ended up with a whole bunch of them and you know they're just they just want to be a Christmas tree, right? So um, I've been thinking of some different ways that I can decorate these and I saw you know one of the um, I don't know, Hispanic or, or Brazilian ladies that does a lot of these um, recycled paper projects, she had a video where she did this technique around a bottle. She just did it around a bottle and then made it into a vase, you know. And um, I just took her technique and used the cone instead of the bottle. And I really just love it. I love the way it looks. It's cool looking. So I think I'm going to do some more of those. I'll try to remember to do a video on this and show you how to do it. Cause, um, or I'll just put the link to hers because hers is better. It's not hard, you know, and it's, it's recycling, so it's good. And it uses up those cones, and it's for Christmas. So it's just a win-win-win, really. Okay, so that's what's on my mind. What else is on my mind is my, you know, I'm in this journal page monthly swap thing. I've been doing since January, and I, um, you know, I want to finish out the year, and we're almost done. Um, and I'm not going to re-up next year, not because it's not a good group. It is a good group, a very good group, and I will put a, a link in the description so that you can go and join if that's something that you want to do. It's a very active group, um, lots of stuff going on, lots of opportunities, and um, just a good bunch of gals. But it's, you know, every month you're assigned a swap partner. So it's just a one-on-one -on -one swap, which I like. And you um, send, you, there's a monthly theme. You make a page according to that theme. You send it out to your swap partner. And then you receive a page from someone else. You know, and, and the hosts who organize it just do a really great job of, keeping up with all that. I can imagine it's a logistics nightmare, but they do a great job. So anyway, I've been just kind of stacking my pages up that I receive every month, and it's been in the back of my mind, different ways to bind them, and I'm kind of starting to flesh that out. So I'm just going to kind of talk about what I've thought about, and then if y'all have any ideas on how I can do this better or easier or different or anything, you know, just let me know because y'all always have the best ideas. All right, this is a folder that I got uh, recently from in some happy mail, and I've got several different patterns of this. I've got this folder. Um, so I'm thinking I might use a file folder, and I actually might end up just covering over it. I'm not sure. But I've, I played with a few things, with some fabric and some canvas, and I decided that I wanted to cover with some substance. You know, I wanted a, a, a sturdy cover. So I think this is how I'm going to go, but I don't know. Plus, I like that, you know, it's got the creases already done, so... <laughs> It's kind of, it comes with its own spine, is what I'm trying to say. And I wanted some way to put my pages in here, bind them in here. But some of these are done on the front and back. 
and so I want to make sure that I can see them front and back so I didn't want to just you know glue them onto another sheet or something that's not going to work um, sheet protectors no I'm very anti sheet protector when it comes to my art journal type things you know I have them in my um, image binder book for storing images and stuff love them for that but for an art journal or um, a, a display journal that's not what I want it just it's not my thing it may be your thing and that's great go for it it's just not my particular thing so I don't I don't want to slip them into sheet protectors which would be the obvious easy choice um, so I'm going to go for the less obvious much harder <laughs> choice and here's what I came up with I don't know if this is going to work um, but we'll see I'm kind of committed now because I've glued little thingies on them Okay, I thought what I would do is do a um, one of those hinged binding deals, which really sometimes just makes me want to gouge my eyes out because it can be really, it's not complicated, but kind of tedious. And so I thought I would do something similar, but really kind of a little bit different. And I'm sure this has a name or something but I don't know what. Anyway, I thought what I would do in my mind, I was going to take like a piece of uh, cardstock, a long strip. Let me find one. Um, well, here we go. We'll just use this scrapbook paper piece because I have it out. Okay, I was going to take a piece of cardstock or scrapbook paper or whatever. I was going to fold it in half. You know, these were my, my early thoughts here. You know, give it a good crease. And then I was going to take my um, journal page and put it in here and then use this strip thing to sew into the spine of my book. You know, in other words, uh, this would be sewn in first and then the page is glued in and then you put another thing on the next one. You know, that kind of deal, right? I'm thinking that'll work. You know, that's still, that's still what I'm going with. But instead of cutting and folding strips of cardstock, I remembered that I had these that I bought at, I think I got them at Walmart or somewhere on a clearance rack. And they're those um, Smashbook I don't even know what they called them, tip-in things, but it's for, you know, if you want to put a new page in your smash book, you, you glue it into here, this goes here, and then these little hook things go over the spiral, the end of the spiral binding in your smash book. So, you know, it's kind of that premise. Well, I don't have a smash book. I rarely use spiral bindings, but these were like a dollar <laughs> for the whole package. But, you know, if nothing else, I can just use them as page borders or something. So I pulled these out. I um, cut the little weird tab off of some of them because I don't need that, you know, this little hook thing. Yeah, I just whack that sucker off. I don't need that. So ended up with this, and these are in two parts. You know, there's two of them together, and there's a little sticky to hold them together right there. So let me just show you, because, yeah, I just whack this off. Boom. And boom, like that. And then pulled these apart. So I've got two. Because there is some sticky on here, but obviously it's not very good sticky. So, there we go. And then, I used these on my pages. I took one strip like this, and it's already got its little crease right there. And I glued the big part to the back of the page. Because, you know, that's going to cover up more of the artwork. So, I wanted the skinny part on the front. Glued that down to the back, left the front like this, so that when I get my cover decision made, I can, you know, there's room enough for me to get my needle in there 
to do a stitched binding. So I'll sew that into the spine and then when I'm through with the stitching I'll go back and glue this down so that it'll be like that and then you know my pages will turn. That's my idea. You know same for here. I've had these on a binder clip together and that sticky that wasn't so good to begin with yeah now it's deciding to stick but that's okay because that's where it's going to be but I will do the same thing just go in and stitch right there right next to the first one glue this down and then that way um, I, I can see the front and the back of my pages and they're not stuffed in sheet protectors you know I can feel them cause, you know me I got to be able to touch them so that's my plan I'll put through these right quick I think I got them out of order I did have them like in order but I think I've um, kind of messed that up as I played with them but here's this one and that one and I don't even remember what all the themes were but I just I love every page that I got. They're all so different. And the page size was for the swap is eight by ten. But some of them some of them are a little more, some are a little less. You know, it happens. That's just part of it. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, the binding was a little bit more of a challenge because the pages are different sizes. And I didn't want to have to cut them all down. Um you know the ones that were a little bit bigger I wanted to leave them a little bit bigger you know I don't care that they're not all uniform size but I didn't want to have to whack off any artwork just to make them fit a particular type of binding or cover or whatever so there's what I have and this is up through September so I'll be getting three more pages but I wanted to start thinking about the binding um, before the end of it so that um, I would actually have an idea and could move forward on it instead of just sitting around going, oh, I've got all these pages, now what am I going to do? And then stick it in a drawer and forget about it. You know, if it's not out and on my mind, I'm going to forget or put it off. So I'm liking this. I think it's going to work. I have a feeling that um, um, this is this folder is probably not going to work just because it looks to me like I'm going to need something wider and stitching if you know, this is paper and stitching really close together through paper there's a really good chance that the paper is going to rip um, you know I could always reinforce it with some duct tape or something but um, I'm just not sure about that. I guess I could cover it with fabric and that would help because I want them stitched fairly close together. You know, they don't have to butt right up next to each other, but I don't want a huge gap between. Fairly close together, but even if I leave just a little quarter inch gap, you know, uh, 12 pages are not going to fit right there. It's going to have to be a lot bigger. My spine is and if I make the spine bigger it's going to shorten my cover you know what I'm saying which means that it won't reach the edge of the book yeah this is not going to work this is so totally not going to oh, see how helpful y'all are I knew <laughs> that if I just asked my YouTube friends I would get a solution and already I have a solution because of you <laughs> okay folder is not big enough I can see that already that leaves me with, I'm going to have to make something. I'm going to have to make a, a um, I don't know what. I could use, I have some canvas. I can do that, but that's kind of, I don't know. That's kind of boring. One of the swap organizers, um, Giselle, has a video on doing an expanding binding that she's done for her pages. I'll try to remember to put a link to that because it's a really good one. And she uses a, like a, a, a not Tyvek, but that, um, uh, what is that paper that's made from stone um, instead of wood pulp? You know, that stuff, whatever it's called. It has a couple of different brand names. It's not, it's not Yupo. 
it might be you, Po. I don't know. Anyway, um, and it, it turned out really cool. And it's nice and expandable. And, and I really am not going to need expandable because um, I'm going to do this when I have all of my pages. And I'm not going to add anything else to it. So, I don't know. All right. I'm going to see what I can come up with. Um, I just spied a gift bag in my closet. I wonder if I have a gift bag that I could take apart. Because that's kind of heavier paper. Hmm. There's an idea. Okay. I'll see what happens with that. So, let me know if you think of any uh, brilliant cover ideas for that. And I'm working on my next page. My one for November. And here's what I have so far. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's as far as I've gotten with it. Okay, here's the theme, which I love. The theme is the 1950s. Um, and when I think of the 1950s, I immediately go to, like, Greece or Happy Days. You know, that kind of uh, a 50s diner, soda fountain, poodle skirts, saddle shoes, leather jackets, checkered tile, you know, um, neon signs, that, that kind of thing. And that's where I go. So I was thinking I'd do something along those lines. And I started looking through my stuff, because that's usually how I start. I find either a, a piece of paper, a pattern, an image, a color, or something that will spark an idea to go with the theme. So I start digging through my stuff. I find nothing. <laughs> I have, and I love retro, you know, 50s, 40s and 50s especially type stuff. But most of what I have is too um, vintage-y looking instead of retro. You know, there's kind of a, I don't know, at least in my mind there's a difference. Retro is more colorful, more fun, more kitschy. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I don't have a lot of that at all. Um, so I came up with Bupkis. I went through my image binders. The only thing that caught my eye out of those two huge black binders was this. I cut these out of a magazine somewhere. I don't know where, when, what. But they are movie posters for 1950s um, sci-fi horror type movies. I love these. I love the colors. I love, you know, the typography is just cheesy fabulous. I just, I love them. So, since that's the only thing that caught my eye, I thought, all right, I'll see if I can build on that. So I went online and I started Googling other 1950s um, horror or sci-fi movies. And I printed out some movie posters for them. I got The um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Plan 9 from Outer Space, The Forbidden Planet, and of course, the creature from the Black Lagoon. So, how fun are those? So, I was really liking this. And I started thinking, okay, I'll do some kind of, maybe like a movie poster thing with a marquee and a theater. A theater, ooh, a drive-in. Yeah, that's iconic 1950s, right? So, I started thinking about drive-in movies, you know, using these with drive-in movies. And so I Googled for some images for 1950s drive-ins. I specifically, in my head, I can see a couple in a car, a convertible, of course. You know, a man and a woman, and she's got all, you know, they're all like 1950s hair on the back of their heads. And then they're watching the screen. You know, you can see the screen in front of their car. That's what I was kind of looking for, because I can see it perfectly in my head. I no longer have the software to be able to create it like I used to when I did that for a living. So I just had to make do with what I could find. And here's what I found. And none of them are perfect, but I think that um, I only printed out two. I have some more that I didn't print out because they're all about the same. This one is pretty darn close. See this one, it has the screen 
this is not going to work. I don't want that text right there, but you know, I can probably I can layer something over it or whatever. And the baby <laughs> that he's feeding in the back with the little hook on bassinet thing. Yeah, baby's got to go because that's not what I see in my head. So I'm just going to have to amputate the baby <laughs> out of there if I use that one. So there's that one. This one is more, is closer to what I was thinking if she would just turn around. It bothers me that she's facing this way. But because I really wanted the back of her head. And you know, nice big screen where I could put one, one of the uh, movie things. I have to be this orientation. One of the movie things on the screen. Um, so that one may work. I wasn't thrilled about it being black and white, but I could color it in somehow and make it not black and white. So there's that. And then I had a printout just some general um, drive-in images. See this one? This one's actually pretty good because um, I could put the movie poster in there. That one, that one might work because it'd be easy to cut off that text or layer over it because it's not touching the screen like it was in the other one. So that one's okay. This one, this one I really like, even though it is a, um, this is not, uh, this is a, um, what am I trying to say? Like a theme park deal, you know. I mean, this guy has on khakis and a shirt. This is not, <laughs> you know, he's not from the, the 50s. <laughs> this is a, um, like a theme park, uh, thingy, but it gives the suggestion of the drive-in movie with the 50s look, and then, you know, I love the, you can even see that, the refreshment advertisement on the screen, so I don't know, I may use that one. This one I really like, but I'm a little confused. You know, when I print these out, I really should actually go to the website and read about what I'm printing out <laughs> instead of just printing it out, because I print it out, and then I wonder, but okay. These cars, they look a little bit more 1940s to me. And I don't know when drive-in movies were born, but these cars look a little old. They look a little old to me. So I'm not sure if this was a modern picture where they had some kind of a, you know, they do those old car rally things. Um, you know, I'm just not sure. But anyway... I might could make it work. I don't know. Those cars really do look too old for the 50s. Maybe they're not. I wasn't born in the 50s. You know, that was that was a decade before me, so I'm not sure. Oh, well. So anyway, that's what I have to work with. Something about um, drive-in movies with all of these uh, movie posters. And, you know, obviously I'm going to have to... Um, resize some things, which is no big deal. Cut some things down, layer some stuff, maybe do a painted background, and um, see what happens. But that's where I'm going with that. So if you think of anything else, I have some more images too. I have an image of the a uh, one of those trays, you know, that they would put on your window at the drive-in, the trays with the food, and then the drive-in speaker. There, it looks kind of awesome. So, makes me all nostalgic. I have been to drive-in movies several and often, but like not on a, like a date or anything, because by the time I was that age, they were all gone, but as a kid. So, it's fun. That is my idea for that. Okay. What else? Gosh, I guess that's all. That's all I have to ramble about right now. Alright, so if y'all have any um, genius ideas for what I can do for my um, drive-in, 1950s drive-in themed journal page, let me know. And let me know if you have uh, a brilliant cover idea for my um, journal page book thing. And, um, yeah, I'll get some stuff together and start working on a video for this because these are easy and fun and... Um, it's, you know, paper tubes, which I love, so that'll be good. Okay, that's all I have. So, no more. The end. <laughs>